Education Forum. Many years ago, and I just Welcome everyone. My name is Lori DeFurio and I work at Adobe Systems and I'm happy to be here to host this e-seminar entitled Using Acrobat in Education. Our guest speaker today is Steve Adler. Steve is the Education Solutions Engineer for Acrobat based here in North America. And Steve has two blogs that he uh, uses and manages, as well as he's a frequent contributor to our Acrobat User Community Education Forum. And I have to tell you, I was out Googling around and looking for information about Steve, and I found this quote that he said many years ago, and I just had to put it on the slide because I thought everyone will totally get it. So Steve, I'd like to hand it over to you. Uh, go ahead, please. Well, thanks, Lori, and uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for attending today. Uh, and just one more uh, aside with that little quote there. Remember, you know, when your computer's acting up, don't make eye contact because, you know, it'll just play with you a bit more. But uh, we are at the mercy of the demo gods today, and I'm uh, broadcasting from Lower Hudson Valley in New York, and I saw we have a lot of people from all over uh, the, uh, the country, so that's great. So I uh, have a couple of slides I want to show you, and then we're going to get into some uh, examples and some techniques. Uh, so if you just bear with me while I share my screen. And just bring this into view here. All right, well then, um, let's get started. Uh, what we're going to cover today uh, are a lot of things in education. Now typically, uh, in the Acrobat Users Seminars, there's a lot of how to do things. Uh, but because education is is unique in that it covers so many things that Acrobat is good for. What I thought I'd do today is not only show how to do a few things, but show a lot of finished examples just to get the, uh, the creative uh, minds running. And I'll uh, mention when I remember that uh, on the Acrobat Users community site, acrobatusers.com, you have all sorts of tips, tricks, and tutorials and videos for learning the basics of the skills that are used in building a lot of these educational documents. So um, we do want to talk about uh, what I think is really important document assembly, rich media integration. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, curriculum uses, but also you know forms in different ways other than just financial type uh, environments. Some forms, workflows, uh, assessment ideas, learning community efficiencies. Learning communities are a great way to get involved, um, in, especially with distributed learning environments. Prior to joining Adobe uh, a couple years ago, I had worked uh, for many years in education uh, in a lot of different roles and uh, really found uh, fantastic ways to integrate uh, and reuse a lot of content that's already out there. And that's why I've chosen Acrobat as kind of my specialty area. Uh, we're going to also look at scanning and cataloging. But again, with the idea of being efficient and being able to actually uh, save money and go green and you know funnel that ever dwindling amount of discretionary funding back into the places that matter in our school systems uh, and institutions. Uh, we'll look uh, at securing and signing some of the new features that are in our cloud services. We'll look at Acrobat.com. And then we're going to look at portfolios, the artifacts that make these things up, and how Acrobat fits into this. So um, I Googled this the other day you know, just to get an idea of you know, what is the definition of an Acrobat. And the images that came up were pretty diverse. And this tends to be the uh, way people think about Acrobat uh, in general, or PDF for that matter. So if we were playing a game show where we had to decide you know, what is a PDF, and this would win the big you know, million dollar question, a lot of us would have different answers. So I did a little uh, thinking, and this is the answer that I believe would win on uh, who, you know, the, uh, who wants to be a millionaire. Uh, it's a universal container that can hold any kind of digital content. Thing is, Acrobat is unique because it, make, it does make PDF, but what it really does is take single-ended objects, single-ended projects rather, things that you create in other applications, and makes them that much more useful. So this container principle ex uh, extends itself you know, right down to that kernel, you know, holding page information, images and postscripts. We have 
commenting layers, data layers, video, security, rich media. And if you think of the big white box here, think of this as the portfolio environment for Acrobat. But the interesting thing is it doesn't have to all be the same. You can have different content within other kinds of content, which ultimately sits in a PDF wrapper. So uh, with that new definition uh, in place, you know, whether you're looking at a PDF or in the PDF portfolio, and I saw from the uh, early uh, poll there, most of you are using version 9, so I'm sure you've had some experience with uh, portfolio either uh, as a, as a uh, observer or as an author. But you can pretty much put anything you want to within the uh, system, within the portfolio environment there, uh, whether it be a PDF or a collection of documents in a portfolio, into that wrapper. And uh, some of the areas of Acrobat that I think really, really speak well for a lot of the education initiatives uh, is the way we collaborate in a variety of ways. Uh, we use kind of an authentic collaboration environment where we're collaborating directly on the document. Uh, we can work online, offline. We can work with Acrobat.com. And I know many of you probably have never heard of Acrobat.com. It's well worth a visit. Uh, it's a free service. It does a lot of things. We'll be talking about some of those things.